They're very much a part of the landscape. They're beautiful, they're stunning trees to look at, but they come with a really large cost. It creates kind of a monoculture beneath the eucalyptus trees. None of the native plants can grow. What you have here is a tremendous amount of stored, ready to burn fuel scattered strategically around your neighborhoods, just waiting for a spark to set the whole thing off. As soon as you establish monocultures of non-native species that have no evolutionary history, things get messed up, really messed up. The blue gum, the large eucalyptus, march ever outward in all directions. They're basically taking up land that is now not going to be able to be used by all the native birds that enjoy a native habitat. You're all probably familiar with the small, you know, 50 cent piece size fluffy white and yellow flower of the eucalyptus. Well, all of the species of birds in Australia that feed on the eucalyptus feed on those flowers, but they all have really long curved bills to keep their nostrils away from the sticky, gooey part of the flowers. They're every bit as gooey there and sticky. You come here and the birds see this food source, and it is a food source. There's sugar and the birds go for it. And it's primarily about five or six species that are strongly affected. The Anna's hummingbird, the ruby-crowned kinglet, the yellow-rumped warbler, the Townsend's warbler, and the cedar waxwing. This is a bird called a myrtle warbler that is, uh, you can see the face is all disfigured by the sap and the goo. All the feathers are all clinging together in a, a tarry glob. And then here's another uh, couple of yellow rumped warblers. And you can see on their forehead the big tarry substance which kind of um, shrouds the whole front of the face and the mandible. And it's just, it's so sad. It just, it really tears me up. They don't belong in a place where their presence has such a detrimental impact on all of the native plants and the landscape, um, whether it's water consumption, fire hazard, habitat destruction, the effects on songbirds. They're beautiful trees. I love them. I love the smell of them. They're pretty, but to me, that is, there's too great of a cost. Their removal? would offer an amazing opportunity to restore a number of native ecosystems that have been erased from this area for a long time now. Though it may not be apparent, invasive or introduced species like eucalyptus interfere with the evolutionary history that is established through eons between basically plants and insects. Insects are the best at converting energy by eating plants and then other, letting other creatures eat them. Then other creatures eat that and other creatures eat that. And it goes on and on in a healthy, diverse ecosystem. So that becomes a, a ecological desert in a eucalyptus grove. The fire weather scenario that we fear the most is during our offshore wind events. Some people call it the Diablo wind events blowing from the east or northeast. In that scenario, should an ignition occur, say in the Dogtown area where all kinds of power lines converge, right there you have a large stand of eucalyptus that looms over the native forest. So if, if a fire starts there during one of these wind events, gets up into the eucalyptus, you immediately ramp up the intensity and the fire spread just by virtue of the height of these trees. And they're also very efficient fire spreaders as the bark, the long streamers of bark, will get sucked up into the rising plume and they can stay burning and capable of starting new fires for miles and miles. So that's the top of Horseshoe Hill. Then there's another large stand of blue gums as you drop into Paradise Valley. If those trees then ignite, 
you have yet greater source of fire spread. And on down the line, as you get down by the nursery at Alima Bellinas Road in Horseshoe Hill, there's another big stand of trees. All these stands I'm mentioning are on the list to be removed. I think the biggest misconception about all these projects is that somehow you're losing something. We are going to gain beautiful areas of native vegetation, native ecosystems that as they sit in, in this moment are basically deserts as far as wildlife is concerned. Nothing's going on in there. In just seconds, a mighty explosion. Fall back. Fall back. When we were first proposing some of these projects, what I kept hearing was, well, that is going to be very expensive. Well, of course it is going to be very expensive, but it will not be nearly as expensive as it will be to rebuild this entire town. How do you put a price tag on a community? How do you put a price tag on preserving a way of life? Although it was said that it would be jarring to see the eucalyptus go, I don't feel that way. When I see them removed, I see other beauties revealed, and I rejoice at that. I mean, the beauty and the sense of rightness is something that, to me, is just defines home. <laughs>